And it's really good to see you. It's amazing what's happening right now with the left um, on so many levels, but I wanna to get to the core. I also wanna to get to this shadow banning thing to tell you a little bit about my own experience. And if you're having any kind of trouble getting through to me or reaching me, it may have something to do with that. We'll tackle that in just a second. It's actually a really important message and you need to hear it. And I hope, um, I hope we find a way to break through some of that shadow banning stuff that's going on because listen, uh, there's, there's half the country out there, half the population that needs to be heard. And right now what we're seeing the left try to do with the courts. This is dangerous stuff. I mean, the president is about to announce a woman, right, that he's nominating for the Supreme Court. People should be happy with that. You'd think the left would be thrilled, right? No, 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 no. They're upset because it would be a conservative woman. And a conservative woman, for whatever reason, as far as they're concerned, just doesn't count, right? And so now they're talking about such horrendous things as packing the courts. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how bad this would be for our country. I mean, you've heard me talk about socialism versus capitalism and my concerns over socialism. What they're talking about, and that's bad enough, is destroying the entire foundation on which our country was built. Separation of powers, right? which is so critical. It's good to see you all. Bob, hello in Minnesota. Welcome to the program. Donald, good to see you. Yes, I agree. We do need to take down the CCP. Someone writing uh, in uh, Chinese there in Mandarin. Bill M., welcome to you. It's, it's good to have you here. Thank you, Darren. All the way in Maine. I'm a big fan of Maine. Having grown up in New Hampshire, I spent a lot of summers in Maine <laughs> over my years. Anyway, uh, this is serious stuff. OK, this is serious stuff. What's happening right now, because you've got the the senator there in Massachusetts, Ed Markey, talking about packing the courts. This is what they're threatening. Just hours after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. What did we see in The Washington Post? We saw an op ed where they were talking about how the left just needs to pack the courts. If Donald Trump puts in his nominee, then they'll fire back with a whole series of judges so that they can then sway so that they can sway the opinions and have more from the left than from the right on the court. Think about this for a second. Just, just think about what they're talking about and how incredibly damaging this is. Just, I mean, even Joe Biden, if he can remember, just last year said that we would rue the day if we ever did that to the courts. In other words, the court, the Supreme Court is supposed to move slower right, than the rest of the population. That's just the reality of how it was intended to be. That's how it was set up. This is what we have our founding fathers to thank for. And yet you've got the left now talking about packing the courts. I mean, before you know it, few elections down the road and you will have a, a Supreme Court the size of the Senate or possibly even the House of Representatives. I mean, that isn't something to laugh about. This is very, very serious stuff. Robert, good to have, oh, Old Orchard Beach. I love Old Orchard Beach. I spent many a summer evening at Old Orchard Beach. Great place, love the rides, uh, cotton candy, all that good stuff. Dave, welcome in Arizona there. Uh, Michelle, good to have you here again in Maine. I love the Maine contingency. Jeff Hansen, welcome. Good evening in the Virgin Islands. Good to see you there. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I'm curious to know what you think of this right now, what they're trying to do to our courts or what they're threatening to do to our courts. I mean, this is like beyond the beyond. I'll tell you, FDR tried this. He had just come off winning back in 1936, pretty big uh, win for him. And he tried to go in and he tried to stack the courts, pack the courts, as it's known. And he wanted to take the Supreme Court from nine to, at that time, 15. They're talking about going to 13 now. And guess what? Even his own party said, no way, not happening, buddy. His own party, because everyone knew how bad that would actually be for our country and how, uh, how much it would deteriorate the court and everything that's supposed to stand for and the fact that we have separation of powers. Thank you very much for a reason. But the left doesn't care about that right now. As I said earlier, Joe Biden just a year ago said we'd rue the day if this happened. Okay? He said that. Bernie Sanders actually said it as well. He didn't want to change the courts. But, you know, Joe Biden <laughs> will be lucky if he remembers what he said an hour ago, let alone last year. Don't forget what he did on masks, right? He told a local reporter in Pennsylvania, I played the clip, that he wanted to make sure there was an executive order 
so that everybody wore a mask nationwide. And then uh, he went on stage at the convention and again, talked about the need for a mask mandate. And then at some point, somebody must have caught up with him and said, you know, hey buddy, that's actually not constitutional. Either that or he realized he wasn't polling well when he said all that. So eventually he started to change his tune. Meaning this guy changes his tune a lot and we are in an extraordinarily political environment. And I'm telling you, do not underestimate for two seconds what they're capable of doing. You heard me talk earlier in this program about shadow banning, right? And how we're seeing so many of the big tech companies really try and prohibit one side, the conservative side, from getting their message out. And that's a very dangerous thing as well. And, and I never really understood it. I'd heard it a lot. Um, I, I certainly know what cancel culture is. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never quite seen it um, as much as I've started to see it now and how they can interfere effectively with a message. Donald, good to have you here. Guido, good to have you here in Pennsylvania. You're saying Pennsylvania is a red with blue governors. How did that happen? You know, that happens a lot, actually. I've seen it in New Hampshire. I mean, you, you historically really had a red state, live free or die there in New Hampshire, and yet occasionally it'll go blue. And, you know, right now it's actually doing the other thing. It's doing the inverse. You're actually looking at a Republican governor and yet they voted just barely. They just barely voted um, last time around in 16 uh, for the Democrat presidential candidate. Anyway, again, Matt Neeson, good to have you here. George Soros, um, one of you is bringing up George Soros and that was interesting. There was something that happened on Fox the other day where George Soros' name was mentioned and immediately everybody got really quiet and said, okay, we don't need to go into George Soros. And uh, you won't hear me do that because um, as far as I'm concerned, everybody is fair game. And George Soros is a big contributor to the Democratic Party, and that should be acknowledged. I don't understand what is uh, so um, prohibitive about saying that. I, you know, Mike Bloomberg is also a big donor to the Democratic Party, and and I've criticized um, some of what he has done, specifically with his news organization, in terms of trying to go after um, Trump and and anybody who's a donor, you know, either side, right? We should be able to talk about that. I'm, I'm not sure you why you wouldn't be able to. Um, Bill, it's good to have you. Vermont is weird. <laughs> you say, do you live in Vermont, Bill? <laughs> Vermont may be a little weird. I'll tell you, New Hampshire's not though. It's very interesting. You go over the border. Vermont's very pretty, right? They have all the fancy signs and there's no Walmart in Vermont. You get to New Hampshire and <laughs> you've got Walmart. They they don't quite have the pretty signs, but it has its own special feel nonetheless. Uh, and, and a very good policy in the way of no income tax, no sales tax. And uh, I like the sound of that. You know, growing up, they always said government, government will spend what government has, right? So both sides of the aisle in terms of uh, politics agreed on one thing. Don't give government much because they'll spend it. Watching you in Ot Ontario. Thank you. Good to have you, Casey Lee. Uh, Casey LJ, forgive me, in Ontario and Pacino. Thank you very much. That's a very nice compliment to get from all of you. This, this shadow banning, though, I wanted to turn to this because this is something that I don't know if you guys have encountered. Uh, I'm starting to see it. And I'm seeing it among some of my um, colleagues out there that are in the conservative space. There really is just, for whatever reason, a desire to kind of shut down that other side. And we've seen it uh, certainly in corporate America. And I've started to see it on the social media platforms as well. And that's a problem, which is why, by the way, I'll encourage you to go to trishintel.com. Trish Intel. You know, I used to host a show. Uh, called the Intelligence Report with Trish Regan, which is how I got the intel thing. Because I, I'm always about trying to provide you whatever intel I can on a story. Uh, so trishintel.com is the site, and you should go and download the podcast because that's all just you and me direct. No other, you know, no other platforms involved, just you and me speaking directly. And the podcast, if you aren't downloading it, please make sure you do subscribe to it. Tell your friends because this is the way to get the message out. And we don't have a whole lot of time. And I'm telling you, if you thought this election was important before, it's now really, really important. In fact, this election is going to come down to the Supreme Court. And if he does this right, I think he has a real shot um, of, of becoming the president for the next four years. My intel, according to my sources that I've spoken to, really say it's coming down to two women. You know, Amy Coney Barrett, of course, her name has been out there. Her name was out there last time uh, before Kavanaugh got it. And wow, 
Think about what they did to Kavanaugh, right? So when Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski are out there saying, well, you know, we really need to wait and they would, you know, effectively offer us the same courtesy. You gotta be kidding me. There's no way they're gonna offer you the same courtesy. Absolutely not. And let's be clear, the president has an obligation. And guess what? Ladies, you as senators have an obligation as well to do what you can to fill that slot because, you know, it's unfortunate, I, you know, no one wishes ill on, on anyone. And it's very sad that, that Ruth Gator Ginsburg, Bader Ginsburg died. And, and listen, she, she was an icon and I'm not gonna, you know, rob her of any of those accolades, but the reality is there is now an open seat. And I know it's not perfect timing for the Democrats, but there's still an open seat. And so the president has a responsibility given that voters sent him there to do this. And those senators, Lisa Murkowski, Senator Collins, up there in Maine, by the way, we're just talking about Maine, um, they have an obligation, right, to, to follow through and to make sure that they're able to confirm. I get it, it wasn't perfect last time around as far as McConnell and Obama, but that was different, right? He, Obama didn't have the Senate back then. And so with Garland, yeah, they were able to, to filibuster that one and prevent that one from going through. But that's not Donald Trump's fault. And he is president now and he's got to do what he can do to get as many justices as he can. Right. Because that's part of being elected as a conservative or as a liberal, that you are going to do what you can to get your conservative interpretation of the Constitution onto the courts. Craig Johnson, good to have you here. Um, you, you know, saying, saying, I believe that Trish is the beginning of an actual move. Actual journalists leaving corrupt networks to, to get the truth out through podcasts. You know, it, it's very it's very liberating, Craig, I will say this, to not have the institution, right? Because I get to say whatever I want to say. And you know, I will, right? I always did, and I still will. And so not having that sort of stress of, okay, well, am I gonna be in trouble today for saying this? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's just you and me. And I love that. There's a purity to this that I think is really important to have as a journalist. Uh, Jeff, good to have you here. Jim as well, hello in Canada. I'm glad you found me too. Um, it, it's really good to see all you guys here. And I, again, I again wanna encourage you to go to trishintel.com because that is one place where it, we are not beholden to any outside technology that may have an influence on things. It's good to see all you guys. This is such an important time, right? So we have to keep talking. We have to stay in touch. And I think that we have to communicate right now because there is, um, there's a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake and I'm going to keep coming on here. I'm going to keep going on Trish Intel. You can read all my opinion pieces there. I'm going to keep being on Twitter and I'm going to keep going on Facebook because this is essential right now and we need to understand what actually is happening. I am telling you, mark my words, if they are successful in this whole uh, pack the court thing, there's no turning back from that, which is why Whatever happens, and I do believe the president will nominate a woman um, very, very soon. Watch for that this week. My sister's is saying potentially tomorrow. Uh, watch for that. And if he's not successful in winning the election, if the Republicans are not successful in keeping the Senate, well, that is when we open this giant can of worms and we are going to be threatened with this idea that they can take over the Supreme Court and no longer have separation of powers, which is intrinsic, right, to who we are in the United States of America. So it's great to see you guys. We've got more to talk about. Go to trishintel.com. I'll see you there and do download the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Have a great night.